Hey everyone, Raif Darazi here, and this is your weekly roundup of the latest HIV news for the weeks, plural, two weeks, of August 21st to September 3rd. I was out of the country visiting family for a wedding, which is why last week's news video didn't come out. So I did my best to combine the two weeks into one and still keep it relatively brief. Today I'll be going through 13 articles covering topics ranging from upcoming results of a late stage HIV vaccine trial, the vaginal ring that acts as PrEP for women, laws on PrEP coverage in the US, the Save HIV funding event happening in DC today, and the effects on weight gain once going off of tenofovir alafenamide, disruptions in supply of HIV medication in Manipur, India, and more. I won't be reading the articles per se, but I will give you a brief summary, and sometimes I'll throw in my opinion and or commentary. If you want access to the complete articles, all links will be available in the description box below. All right, let's jump right into it. Number one, the Global Fund. Global Fund agreements substantially reduce the price of first-line HIV treatment to below US $45 a year. The Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria, along with its partners and generic pharmaceutical manufacturers, will now offer the first-line HIV treatment to Nofavir, Disaproxyl, Fumarate, Lamivudine, and Dolutegravir, also known as TLD, at a reduced price of under $45 per person per year. Yes, a 25% reduction. TLD is a one-pill antiretroviral treatment recommended by the World Health Organization for its effectiveness and minimal side effects. This cost reduction will enable resource-limited countries to expand access to crucial HIV services and treatment, saving more lives and reducing new infections. This progress builds on previous efforts to make TLD available at affordable prices and has helped about 19 million people living with HIV in resource-constrained settings access this treatment. Number two, the star, the rubber ring that is boosting the war on HIV. Several African countries are taking a pioneering approach to combat new HIV infections by embracing a vaginal ring developed by the International Partnerships for Microbicides. These rings are made of a rubber and silicone blend and provide women with a discrete method of HIV prevention. They slowly release depivirine, an antiretroviral drug, over 28 to 30 days. Kenya is launching a major trial of these rings, with the Ministry of Health conducting a five-year study across six facilities in Kisamu, Nairobi, and Mombasa to assess their efficacy. This approach is seen as a way to address the disproportionately high transmission rates among women and girls in sub-Saharan Africa, where they account for 63% of nearly 700,000 new HIV infections. Number three, Taylor and Francis Online. Increasing the meaningful involvement of women in HIV cure-related research, a qualitative interview study in the United States. This article tackles the concerning underrepresentation of cisgender women in HIV cure research, despite them comprising more than half of global HIV cases. It highlights factors like eligibility criteria, a lack of incentives, and researcher bias contributing to this issue. Women also face unique challenges from social obligations to limited awareness of research opportunities. This exclusion hampers scientific progress and data interpretation. To address this, the article stresses the urgent need for meaningful involvement of women in HIV cure research for equitable access and scientific advancement. It also explores the importance of clear definitions of sex and gender setting enrollment goals, addressing various challenges, and promoting data disaggregation, meaning breaking down the data into smaller groups and seeking to understand those individual groups of data rather than making big sweeping generalizations from the data, and transgender inclusion in research. Additional considerations include logistical barriers, compensation, and the importance of precision medicine, which is defined as medical care designed to optimize efficiency or therapeutic benefit for particular groups of patients, especially by using genetic or molecular profiling, all with the goal of ensuring women's representation and active participation in HIV cure studies. Number four, the globe and male. Stigmatized, then sterilized, when Hondurans with HIV seek care for their pregnancies, many are forced to forfeit their reproductive rights. This article sheds light on the disturbing issue of forced sterilization of HIV-positive women in Honduras. 
It recounts the experiences of women who were coerced into undergoing sterilization procedures while giving birth via C-section, solely due to their HIV status. This human rights violation primarily affects marginalized groups such as impoverished women, those with disabilities, and HIV-positive individuals. Organizations like SEPROSAF and Lawyers Without Borders Canada are working to document cases and provide support to victims. The victims are often unaware of their rights and are pressured into signing consent forms they don't fully understand or comprehend. The emotional and physical trauma endured by these women is profound, and they seek justice, compensation, and awareness to prevent future occurrences. Number 5. Scroll.in. HIV patients in Manipur Hills at risk as medicine supplies disrupted. In Manipur, India, HIV patients are facing a severe shortage of antiretroviral medication due to ethnic violence and disrupted supply lines. Manipur has a relatively high number of HIV cases compared to its population, and patients rely on free government-run antiretroviral therapy centers for medication. However, since May, ethnic violence has made it difficult to transport essential medicines, including HIV medication, to certain areas, particularly the Manipur Hills. HIV patients are receiving shorter supplies of medication, and there have been instances of medication being divided to accommodate children. Efforts to resolve the issue have been hindered by the volatile situation, and some patients have had to travel to neighboring states for treatment. The conflict has also divided the health community, with accusations of communal tensions being exacerbated by some activists. Number 6. NBC News Insurers must cover injectable HIV prevention drug unless courts void mandate. The U.S. Preventive Services Task Force has endorsed a long-acting injectable medication, known as Apritude, for use in HIV prevention, potentially expanding access to this preventive therapy. However, a lawsuit led by a group opposing the coverage of HIV prevention drugs on religious grounds could void the requirement for insurers to cover such drugs. This legal battle could impact people's ability to afford preventive interventions and screenings for various health conditions beyond HIV prevention. Apertude has shown promise in preventing HIV and can play a significant role in reducing HIV transmission rates, especially among communities at higher risk. However, the lawsuit's outcome will determine the future of this recommendation. Number 7. Washington Blade Bill would abolish U.S. aid because it promotes global LGBTQ intersex rights. U.S. Rep. Matt Gates has introduced a bill aimed at abolishing the U.S. Agency for International Development, known as U.S. Aid, because of its promotion of LGBTQ and intersex rights worldwide. The bill argues that U.S. Aid spreads what it calls, quote, perverse ideology, end quote, and aims to address, quote, restrictive gender norms and inequalities, end quote, in its programs. Several other Republican lawmakers have co-sponsored this bill. In contrast, President Joe Biden has committed the U.S. to promoting LGBTQ and intersex rights abroad, and U.S. aid recently released its first ever LGBTQ and intersex inclusive development policy. This legislation highlights the ongoing debate over LGBTQ rights and U.S. foreign policy. Number 8. Action Network. Save the date. Press conference to hashtag save HIV funding. There will be a press conference on Tuesday, September 5th, today at 4 p.m. Eastern in Washington, D.C., calling on Congress to reject cuts to domestic HIV programs and protect global HIV response funding. The House has proposed significant cuts to domestic HIV programs, risking over $767 million and eliminating funds for the Ending the HIV Epidemic Initiative. Global HIV funding is also at risk. Advocates aim to unite and oppose any proposal to reduce HIV funding, emphasizing the importance of continued support for HIV programs. Attendees are encouraged to wear red for solidarity. Number 9. The Body Pro Switching away from tenofovir alafenamide and or an integrase inhibitor did not rapidly reverse weight gain. A study in the Netherlands found that switching away from integrase strand transfer inhibitors, also known as INSTIs, and or tenofovir alafenamide, also known as TAF, in HIV treatment is not associated with rapid weight loss. Researchers analyzed data from the Dutch Athena cohort and found that participants who had gained greater than or equal to 7% of their body weight after starting these medications did not experience significant weight loss after switching to different regimens. The study highlights the need for further research on weight changes 
during and after HIV treatment and suggests the importance of targeted strategies to prevent excessive weight gain in HIV patients. Number 10, The Guardian, Center Laments Surge in Pediatric HIV. The Center for Integrated Health Programs, known as CHIP, has raised concerns about the increasing number of HIV infections in children in Nigeria and emphasized the importance of using artificial intelligence to locate and treat HIV-positive children who have not been identified. While Nigeria has made strides in treating HIV in adults, children with the virus often go undetected. CHIP CEO Dr. Bolanli Oyeladun called for multiple interventions to reach these children and ensure they receive appropriate care as they grow. The organization has already implemented various interventions in HIV AIDS and immunization, testing pregnant women for HIV and placing those who test positive on treatment. Oyeladun highlighted the role of AI and data processing in mapping and locating new infections to combat the HIV epidemic more effectively. Number 11, Ghana Web. 70,000 requests made for HIV self-testing kits barely a month after launch. Since its launch in Accra just a month ago, the HIV self-testing kit initiative has already seen more than 70,000 people using it. Initially, there were over 33,000 community requests when it was introduced, and this number has doubled in short time. Over 11,000 requests have been made online and distribution of the kits is ongoing across Ghana. However, despite these efforts, new HIV infections continue to be concern. In 2022, there were over 16,000 new infections, with an estimated 354,000 people living with HIV by the end of the year. Health officials are urging Ghanaians to embrace the self-testing kits as a way to combat these rising numbers. Number 12, AFEW. Ukrainian activists living in Poland continue to help the Ukrainians with HIV integrate with the social medical sphere of the country. AFEW International, in partnership with organizations in Poland, has conducted training programs for Ukrainian refugees with HIV living in Poland. The project aims to engage these refugees in HIV policy and practice. The training topics included mental health and HIV, HIV treatment and prevention, the activities available for HIV-positive individuals in Poland, and addressing stigma and discrimination. The program also covered grant writing and project applications to help participants develop initiatives for their communities. The goal is to empower participants to support their communities in the regions where they reside. The project has received support from various partners and experts in Poland, and it aims to combat HIV-AIDS, discrimination, and promote gender equality. Number 13, last article, CNN Health. A trial is underway that could be the, quote, last roll of the dice, end quote, for an HIV vaccine this decade. The PrepVac trial in Africa is in its later stages, testing two HIV vaccines alongside two forms of pre-exposure prophylaxis to evaluate vaccine efficacy while providing protection against HIV transmission. This trial is viewed as a crucial effort in the quest for an effective HIV vaccine. If successful, it could mark a new phase in vaccine development. However, failure could lead immunologists to abandon this generation of vaccine hopefuls. The trial is currently blind to the data, with results expected in the fourth quarter of 2024. This comes after several previous HIV vaccine trials proved safe but ineffective at preventing HIV except for one trial in Thailand with modest effectiveness. To be considered successful, either of the two vaccines being tested in PrepVac will need to achieve an efficacy of at least 70%. All right, folks, you can find links to all these articles in the info box below this video. Big shout out to Tan Anderson for another $30 super thanks in my last video and Flavio Marcelo Sousa 35 for a whopping $100 super thanks. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to support my channel in this way, you can do so via super thanks down below, or I've included my PayPal link in the description box. Be sure to follow along in my personal life on Instagram. You can also engage in discussion with me on Twitter and threads, and also you can find me on Facebook, TikTok, and LinkedIn. The Telegram group continues to thrive with over a thousand members. All links down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe and hit that bell so you get a notification every time a new video comes out and share with anyone who might find value in this content. That is the best way that you can help support me and my channel. Thanks everyone. Until next time. Cheers.